Conversate for a few. Welcome to another episode of Conversate for a Few. I'm Jonna. I'm Alan. This is not a podcast about classical music. Absolutely is not. This is a podcast about hip hop. Mm-hmm. What are we doing today, bro? Uh, so we're gonna take time out just to discuss who are who and what are the real culture vultures. Okay. This is very necessary. Yeah. Very necessary. Because I was going to, go ahead, go ahead. that phrase, the phrase culture vulture has been a buzzword for a few years now, but in truth, it really has not been um, clear on what makes someone a culture vulture and then pointing out who some are. Yeah, it's a um, it's a word that's loosely lose, uh, loosely. Damn, I said that ass backwards, didn't I? Uh, it's mm-hmm. loosely used. Generally, when somebody's hating on somebody from a different culture, from a different ethnic ethnicity, is generally when I hear it, right? Uh, right? But I think it's a lot. I think it's a lot deeper than that. I think it's a real thing. Um, and I think it's about time that somebody get to the bottom of it, polls, and figure out who they are, why it's happening, and yeah. and you know, what the impact may be going forward. Yeah. But I'm going to speak to something real quick. Uh, All right. The reason the reason that I wanted to, to do the show or had this conversation, uh, the, it sparked this conversation in me, is I don't know if y'all seen it being the Futane clan out there, but there's a meme going around and it says uh, how hip hop was invented. And it's, and it's, it's, a, it's a white dude uh, in, a muse- in, in a museum and he's doing popular dances from the culture in front of the statue. And the statue is kind of posed in a way that the dance ends or begins. You know what I mean? Like it, the, 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 the statue looks like it's doing the dance because he emulated the dance in front of it. And he did about four or five different dances, went to about four or five different uh, statues and did it. Got real popular. And... Right. Of, of course, it's a joke, right? So I want to ask yeah. you: Do you think me taking offense to that meme was uh, was was an overreaction? Uh, no, and the reason, and, and my no is probably biased because I'm saying that because I had the exact same reaction and feeling. Okay, I didn't know so that. I really, don't, I really don't think it is because I feel like if it was any other genre. Um, they would have the people of that genre or, or has affinity for that genre would have felt the same way. I know uh, it was a joke, yeah. not just felt like it was a very bad, tasteless joke. And, and on top of that, it was yeah. just lame. Yeah, like I recognize it as a joke. I knew he was trying to be funny. Like I get that. Yeah. I totally understand he was trying to be funny. Um but I don't think he took into account the fact that that's that's damn near blackface. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's damn near blackface. Uh, that and my my nephews. Let's say like my nephews, Jermaine's kids, right? Yeah, they're immersed in hip hop. Right. They're immersed in hip hop, but that's because they dad is and they get in the version of hip hop and they get in the lessons uh, from before. You know, what I mean, like the things he grew up on, the things that that I kind of schooled him to when he was little. You know, that all they're getting all of that. Plus, they getting influence from some of the stuff that's going on today. Right. But all kids, all kids not going to get that. Matter of fact, the majority mm-hmm. of kids is not going to get that. The majority of kids is going to find their information and their hip hop online. They're going to find it in memes. They're going to find it in, in interviews that mm-hmm. may be done uh, tastefully or maybe done by somebody that don't know what the hell they're talking about. You know what I mean? They're going to find these short mm-hmm. mini documentaries about about the culture. Yeah. And they're going to look at this stuff like it's law. Mm-hmm. That's the I'm point. not saying that that's the point. I'm not saying that they're going to think that hip hop was invented in these museums, but it's going to be part of them that attaches the beginning of hip hop to some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got to think about it. Even because even the artists 
Uh, even the the artists of today, they don't know too much about just 10 years ago, 20 years exactly. ago. So you're talking about exactly. the beginning of something and you're saying this. How do they know? How do they know? Especially, they know? If it's, especially if, like, think about someone that is not, have, uh, you know what I mean, into hip hop. Right. Like, and, see, that's and the thing. You gotta, can become a serious narrative down the line. That's my point. That was exactly my statement. That's exactly how I felt, right? Yeah. Uh, a joke can become the narrative. Right. That's just all it is to it. A joke can become the narrative, can become the leading narrative. Uh, and I don't, and I'm not saying that's that man's intentions, but you have to be more thoughtful. You know, you could tell it, you got to find a better joke. Right. You know what I mean? You could frame it different. Don't say this is how hip hop was invented. Say these statues bit off of hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. You mean? yeah. Frame it that way. You see what I'm saying? Frame mm -hmm. it as if hip hop was here before the statues. We know that's not true, right? But we also know that that that's not how hip hop was invented. So it don't make no difference whether the statement is true or not. It could be as ridiculous mm -hmm. ridiculous as you want it to be. But frame that in a way that puts hip hop above being stolen by another race or ethnicity or culture. Right, right. And you know? okay, good. All right, now we'll so. The statue, I, I mean, I was going to like pull it up because I just wanted to make sure. But the statues, weren't the statues Greek? Greek, like, Roman, like they weren't black. Statues. They didn't come from Egypt. You know, they they weren't hip hop statues. Oh, they no, weren't hip hop statues. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, these are all uh, Roman and Greek statues. Yeah. And the guy that's doing it, I can't really tell. I guess he is. I'm gonna be honest with you. He's probably I mean, he's some version of Caucasian. Yeah, he's some version of Caucasian. I was gonna say he's from Spain. It looks like he's yeah, from Madrid. Some, <laughs> yeah, some yeah, some version of Caucasian. But I'm gonna I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't give a damn if he was black. Right. That's what I'm saying. It don't matter. But I'm just but I'm just compounding yeah. like compounding mm -hmm. the factors that just make it a bad joke. And yep. And doing this and you doing these in front of white Greek statues, they already teach, right? Like, that they originated mm -hmm. everything, the Greeks and Romans. They which originated we know, culture. Right, which we know is not true, which we know right. all of the philosophers uh, like went into Egypt and studied under black philosophers and scientists. But anyway, so what, I, what I'm saying, it actually, this is the problem I had when, when I seen it, I was pissed off. And then we was all pissed off, like maybe for our own individual reasons, right? I'm like, it's some whack shit because number one, it perpetuates a historical lie that white people originated everything of culture and art, which don't even make right. sense because they ain't even always been on the planet. That's one. Right. Number two, it was like, yo, it's like to promote that or to do this is kind of like advocating white supremacy. It is, yeah. It, it like, is. It is a very it, bad it, visual and message that's being sent, even as a joke. Even as a joke. Even as a joke. It, to to go back to the beginning of this conversation, blackface was a joke to them too. Right. Exactly. Blackface was funny. Black. You see what I mean? Like, so this ain't no different. Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. It's it's really mockery. Like blackface is mockery. That's what, what it he's is. doing is mockery. Yep. Mockery. And I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate it. I said so in the comments. I said so in the comments the first time I saw it posted. Then I saw United Masters posted. Mm. That pissed me off. Yeah. I, I was irritated before. That pissed me off. So in the comments, I went at United Masters' throat. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I expected more from y'all. But maybe I shouldn't because obviously y'all don't give a fuck the way y'all say y'all do. Y'all yeah. obviously don't care about the culture the way y'all say y'all do. You know what I mean? You, you're not ran from the stand. You're not ran from the standpoint, uh, from the cultural standpoint that I assumed you were, and maybe that's my fault because I assumed it, right? Uh, because it had a because of the figurehead was black. I, I assumed that they may be uh more defensive of right. of, of 
hip hop culture, right? And be, if, not even because he was black, because he came from the culture, right? Mm-hmm. I also have to admit though that he was one of the driving factors. And we think this exploitation was good because exploitation is not always a bad word, right? But to be right. able to exploit the popularity of hip hop for the marketing dollar, right? And we're talking about Steve Stout, mm-hmm. and that's who started yeah. United Masters. Right, um, right. But because I saw Steve Stout as the figurehead, maybe I assumed that that uh, United Masters cared about the culture a little bit more. That's my fault. But them posting that made me believe that they don't give a shit at all. They're not even watching to see. They're not even paying attention to see if if what they're doing is affecting the culture in an adverse way. Right. So I made that statement in the in the in the uh, comments. I can't remember bro's name, but there was some dude from South Carolina, some young kid. He ain't that bad as an artist because I went and listened to his stuff. He was he ain't that bad. I was actually gonna show him some love after I shitted on him in the comments, but he said <laughs> something to me. And the motherfucker told me it's just a joke, old timer. Boy, I told his ass up. <laughs> I told his ass so he yeah. ain't say nothing else. I put it to you that way. He ain't said nothing else. I made sure that he knew how ignorant he was. Right, right. You know what I mean? I I, I want to read it. Yeah. I, if I can find it. I don't know if I can find it. Yeah. But, uh, if, if you go ahead and look for it. And I want to make a comment about the, like, even the, the dance, how it ends in the pose of the statue. Yeah. And, and it's saying, at the end, you know, how hip hop was invented. But not only are you saying that the art of, that, that art of hip hop stemming from that, but like the actual dances, that's what the, the, you're saying is the dance is stolen from them. Like these niggas <laughs> had actual the rhythm and culture, right? And movement that we do, which we know ain't the case. So uh, I have to that too. Nah, yeah. But that whole thing was wild. And yeah. I don't and I don't nice. like the fact that Steve Stout promoted that. That's crazy to me. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that he did, but I, I know that he, he set up the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Somebody, so, somebody, somebody did. Stout is a culture vulture. No, I'm just- <laughs> I feel you. Um, so this is what this is what United Masters posted as a as their caption for what yeah, we're what talking about for that say? for that meme. Yeah. History says that Leonardo da Vinci was not only a great painter, but he could get sturdy too. Yo. Yeah. Further perpetuating the bullshit. Yeah. Right? Further perpetuating the bullshit. So I said, I was about to say y'all should know better. But obviously you don't give a fuck about the culture the way you claim to. That's all I said, right? Mm-hmm. Oh boy, his name is vinyl, but it's not spelled like vinyl. But it, it, he said, laugh out loud, old timer. It's called a joke. Stay on Facebook. That shit was funny. Now that's funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> I call Facebook the graveyard of social media with all the old people. Go. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, that shit was funny. funny. I, I mean, it was funny. You yeah, know what I mean? So I said, nah, young punk, laugh out loud. I'm right here. I hear God look out, look at the babies and fools. So thankfully, either way, you should be cuffed. You should be protected. <laughs> I said, ain't no protection for ignorance, though. Sadly, you seem too dumb to know you dumb, poor fella. <laughs> so, wild. yeah, you know, anyway. But he deserved it. Yeah. And somebody right under me, United Masters, they just put STFU. Just shut the fuck up. That's probably all I should have did. But either way, next yeah, thing yeah. it pissed me off. Yeah. That meme was inappropriate, and it was and 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 for lack of a better word, it's appropriation. It is very yeah. much so. Yeah, it's appropriation, and and just going through the comments, it was it was so few people that felt like me, and so many people that were celebrating the joke. Mm. Yeah, you know. And that was the scary part, because when you get so many people celebrating the joke, you know they sharing it. And and the more they share it, you're going to have their little five-year-old nephews over their shoulder. You know what I mean? Paying attention to the BS. They're not going to have sense enough to school them to what's real. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? They now they go on a field trip. That five year old, six year old go on a field trip with they with they school to the to the art museum and they yeah. looking at them statues in front of the statues dancing as if that's where the dance came from. Right. Yo, you see, you see how it just trickled and keep and how, right. how it snowballs. Right, and I got I got a problem with that, and I and then this hope hopefully you understand me. I have a big problem with people contorting, convoluting history. Yo, I have yeah. a major problem with that. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, even even that I don't even like the caption for it. Not only was right. he a great painter, blah blah blah, like because it just keeps factoring into like. Um, like they originated all this stuff. That's my whole thing. Right. Stop. They already right. get. They've gotten more than enough credit for stuff they yeah. did not the, originate and invent. The only Christopher we acknowledge is Wallace. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so it's like he already got more than enough credit. Like Thomas Edison, we he, he didn't he didn't invite invent the light bulb. Right. A black man right. that you stole it from, he took his patent. But anyway. But I'm just looking at that, like all of their great painters and great artists, they really plagiarized works of, you know, other blacks. So I'm, I don't like that. Like he's also known to get sturdy. So we're going to give him credit for inventing the art, the culture and the music right now and the dance moves indirectly because it, it don't say dance moves, but he's doing the statues and emulating the ends of the dance moves. So it's like, yo, this joint is wild. Now, I just want to make this point because th- this stuff is. I don't know. Sometimes they try to promote this stuff. The joint is so crazy and makes no sense because this is how you know when someone didn't originate something because their origin story always sounds crazy as hell. <laughs> like, it never makes sense. Like, Christopher Columbus found America when clearly people was already here. Like, so, but I, like, Isaac Newton, right? And I just have to say this because I, I want to make the point. He's accredited with finding gra- with being the founder of gravity. Do you know how he found gravity? Talk to me. He suppo- supposedly the story goes he's sitting under yeah. a tree. An yeah. apple drops, falls from the tree, drops on his head, and he's oh, he does some calculations. Oh, gravity. So yeah. wait, 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 man. Who you think you're talking to? So you mean to tell me? <laughs> Nobody had ever witnessed or Apple had never dropped on nobody else before him. Nobody right. didn't ever recognize you throw something in the air, it falls down. So right. something is in around us pulling everything down. Like nobody ever saw that. They didn't recognize when they jumped, they came back down. Like, see the audience to to make a fucking sense, man. Right. You're right. So smart. They always be a sense. super stretch. As a matter of fact, it don't yeah. even be a stretch. What I've learned. Uh, through my years of being a wild boy when I was younger, is the bigger the lie you tell, the easier it is for the motherfuckers to believe it. Yeah, you know. So you tell a ridiculous lie. Some people are like, "Yeah, that's got to be true," because ain't no way in the world you would lie about that. You know. So that's what we hearing. We hearing ridiculous yeah. lies that it just just don't make sense. Yeah, because that was when you were saying I was thinking, yeah, ain't nobody yeah. before him getting hit with that apple jumped or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, all right, fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So I agree. We end up with the most outlandish stories that you could end up with. But that, I mean, I guess that was a long conversation about what prompted the more broad conversation, right? That that we here to have. Um, it it did piss me off something terrible for. Him. I'm I'm still not over it. I'm, I think I may be over it after we had this conversation, but I got a feeling yeah, yeah. that some of the things that we're going to uncover in this conversation is going to make me angrier. So I'm going to be probably more pissed off after we get off this, after we stop talking than I was before we even started. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. This is I, I I wonder though, like Futane, y'all please tell me what y'all think. You know what I mean? Like, is this are we tripping? <laughs> you know, and if and if you do think we tripping, I would challenge you to go look at the history of rock and roll. Go look at the history of jazz, um, and just just do some research for me. 
and figure out what the beginnings of it were and what it mm-hmm. looks like now. You know, mm-hmm. jazz is still particularly thought of as a as as a black art. Um, but I would I would challenge you to say that when jazz was the highest that it could possibly be on the on the charts. When you yeah. had your, your Kenny G's and stuff, the mm-hmm. face of jazz was a white person. And now jazz is a it's is you have to it's it's a it's a it's a crate diggers craft. Mm-hmm. To 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 love jazz, you have to be searching for the popular jazz popular artists. Jazz. They're not yeah. popularized by any record label at all. Mm-hmm. Um and the closest things that you have to it. Uh, lounge singers, that those types of singers that all popularize you like your Michael Bublé's, and, and and the face is still white. Yeah. Um, so once it was whitewashed, it essentially went away as a popular form of music, but it was whitewashed. Yes, you know, and 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 you could almost say, of course, rock lasted a lot longer. But once it once it completely got whitewashed, it also went away. Yeah. As as a popular music. You know? Right. Um mm. I'm seeing these things happen in hip hop real time. And this meme is part of that trajectory. Yeah, yeah. Is evidence of that trajectory. Maybe not even part of it. I think it's part of it, but I will say, but I don't have any proof that it's part of it. I can see how it will be, but I can say that it's evidence of its trajectory of being whitewashed and disappearing in its form that we know and love. It's 50 yeah. years old now. You feel me? It's 50 years old. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, it ain't a young genre no more. I mean, it's young, comparatively speaking, but ain't nothing 50 years old, young. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess it pissed me off, boy. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. What, what, where would you like to go from here? What, <laughs> what, what is um? So, give me one. Give me someone that you uh, that comes to mind when when the word culture vulture. Who's someone that come to mind for you? Post Malone. Mm. Okay. Like, okay. I'm a, and I said that because I think he's probably the most evident and popular, right? Right. But I honestly feel like there's four major types of culture vultures. Okay. And I think the one we're going to speak the most about will be the last that I named, but I'm going to name them in order. I'm going to say unintentional, right? Mm-hmm. Artistic, mm-hmm. like a art, like Post Malone, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Executive. Mm-hmm. And media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, in today's time, because, because the way because of the way content is consumed primarily, I think the most dangerous culture vultures are the media culture vultures, not even necessarily the artistic ones. Right. And in all four of the categories that you name, with the exception of unintentional, but maybe mm-hmm. unintentional indirectly, but all three of those are uh, monetary driven. Like all three. The- like the yep. the media, the, what, what what it comes down to is the, the money. I mean, that's the whole reason right. for for being for because what is what is we a vulture do? A vulture eats it consumes pretty much anything, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, uh, mostly dead carcasses, but it eats it, anything, right? So it consumes. So they. So in each of these, the, each of those three categories, they're consuming the culture for a monetary advantage. Exactly, and and speaking on the the, the consuming the carcasses from a media standpoint, most of the culture vultures that I have listed mm-hmm. that I feel like may be culture vultures, they literally mm-hmm. are feeding off of the death inside. 
or around rap culture. I wouldn't even call that hip hop culture. You see what I'm saying? Around rap yeah. culture, there's a lot yeah. of death and violence going on, and there's a ton of media that they their, their entire platform is built on the death and destruction of artists. Right. I agree 100%. So that just goes, yeah, that's the perfect line yeah. with, with, yeah. With the vulture pure and vulture. Stuff. Pure vulturism. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. pure, Literally, unadulterated with, vulturism. Right. Just like when you see vultures in a row eating something that has died, some roadkill. Literally, yeah. those, these YouTube, these YouTubers that we'll get to, literally make their living off of the death that's in rap culture. Yep. 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 And uh, the mother and father Mm -hmm. of this media Mm -hmm. is DJ Vlad with Vlad TV and DJ Academics. Both who claim to be DJs. Vlad had mixtapes. Okay. Uh, we, ne- we never played them in the hood. <laughs> I never knew them shits existed. No, no, no. Yeah, I hear people talking about it now. Like, that nigga, that won't clue. It won't do what? Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. You hear people talk about them. You hear people talk about them. Have you ever heard one of them motherfuckers? No, I've never heard one. And that's what I'm saying. So, people so, only talking about it after he became. And like, huh? He had like, I never, I, let me be clear. I'm not saying people was talking about him when they were supposedly out. No, people was talking right. about him in con- contemporary times. Like, oh, he did make sex. Right. No, I'm saying we never knew that. Nobody was checking for that. Like it was, you know what I mean? Like it was, come on, stop. Hey. Nah, he he might have been popular. He might have been hella popular locally. He might have yeah, been, yeah, yeah. been a beast locally. But yeah, but outside we, we of didn't that. know nothing about it. It was not no. part of it was not part of the mixtape culture when mixtape culture was popping. Of course, you know, right. like some of the, the great knowns that we know from Clue to Ron G to DJ S N S. Like right. he, he was even all the way down point. to Sycamore. No, nah, yeah. he wasn't. He wasn't important. He was. Nah. He wasn't important. Like he might have been important locally, but he damn sure wasn't important outside of where he was. Right. Because I don't know nobody that knew that he was doing his thing as a DJ. And, mm. and academics claim he was a DJ in college. Like, he spun college radio, did a few parties and all that stuff. Yeah, okay. Fine, you're a DJ. I don't need, I don't, I don't. I think both of them need to oh. take DJ off their name, but go ahead. I, don't <laughs> I, I agree. You don't even look like, yeah, okay. All right, go ahead. Yeah, but Vlad, in my opinion, is the father of the... Get the wildest story that you can from this artist interview platform. Get yeah, get the most salacious story and then capitalize off, off perfect words. Viewers, <laughs> yeah. Get the yeah. most salacious story we could possibly get. Get him to say the wildest, most salacious bullshit possibly. Chop it up and mm-hmm. put out as many segments of this as possible. He's yeah. the he's the he's the father of that. Yeah. So um, that see, and, I was going to ask you. Who? Because you said yeah. mother and father. So, but now you asked the question. You, you just said Vlad is the father. So I guess academics is the mother. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and 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 yeah, I know it's like super pause. Um, mm-hmm. Vlad gave birth to people like Say Cheese and Off the Porch, and you know what I mean, like those mm-hmm. platforms where you got people sitting up there high as a kite. I'm Adam 22, yes, another one, spilling their guts, saying things that are absolutely inappropriate, uh, you know, just making a mockery of themselves for for clicks, for someone, for, for popularity and clicks for someone else. So that. And then you have academics who is the mother of the, I don't even know what you call these. It's maybe it's, it's, Documenting yeah. or being a outside documentarian, documenting something that you've never actually been close to. Yeah, you know, I think that's what Ack is doing. Uh, that's what Ack did, and then he did that with the Warren Chirac. Took off. Uh, he has pivoted, you know, and I'll speak on yeah. Ack a little bit more. He has pivoted, and that's not necessarily what he's doing now. 
right. what he's doing now may be a little bit it's, it's still culture vulture and it's just it's culture vulture light <laughs> um but i but i but i think is and i'll tell you why it's det- i'll tell you why it's detrimental now um at admittedly says he didn't get a hold to hip hop until he was damn near an adult See, that's a, that's also a reason why he needs to take DJ off his name. Go ahead. Facts. Um, <laughs> that and and you're not of hip hop. Yeah, you're not of hip hop, and this is why he's a culture vulture. You're not of the culture. Exactly. Co- you're not of the culture. You just you you stumbled onto a culture you found interesting and started reporting on it. Yeah, and then and- you found popularity. Right. And, see, and, and, and the he, things that you were... Go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say his commentary on it should have been limited because he didn't have no involvements with it. He shouldn't have... And that's my problem is he has so much to say about it as if he has experienced front line. It, like, it's not too much you can say if you haven't been... I, I can't speak so much about prison because I ain't never been to prison. Right. So how much commentary can I give on it? Even if I am doing you know reporting on it I, it's only so much i can personally say yeah it's it's literally you finding the information that somebody else has already posted and synthesizing it and and through your lens but if you just found hip-hop when you was 18 years old or even 16 years old if you just found hip-hop when you was 16 years old your lens ain't thick enough to have a proper to have a, a a proper view of what it is that you even looking at, so your synthesis and your analysis is going to be flawed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's what that's the problem I have with academics. Even though he's pivoted away from, you know, uh, the Warren yeah. Chirac type salaciousness, mm-hmm. he's still giving very very strong opinions on the culture. And because he's gotten further into it, his job at Everyday Struggle, he knows artists. He's got he's got the numbers of some execs. And, his view of it is still skewed because he doesn't understand the culture itself. Right. But, but in the, yeah. And you know, the problem is, but he's gotten deeper into the minutia, Hollywood, Hollywood part of the coach, the yeah. Hollywood part yeah. of it, right. The business yeah. side of it. And in his mind, he thinking he's deeper into the culture because he got, he, he has maybe some relationships with artists or, you know, execs here, and there, like so. Now you can't tell him he ain't the culture. Right. No, bro, you're not. That's right. Because you did not live. You ain't. You didn't breathe this. You didn't grow up on it. Admittedly, by his own admission, um, you. So basically, you have no connect. You don't really have an organic connection and affinity for it, for the culture That's of right. hip hop. That's right. So the things that you love are going to be business principles. You're going to love the the. You're gonna love the things that put money in your pocket, not necessarily to put art in the world. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you're gonna champion things and, and champion approaches that will create culture vultures going forward because a kid 10 years old that follows act immensely thinks this is the way you should think about hip hop. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's you huh. <laughs> terrible, bro terrible so uh and and now he's off in that world basically reacting to everything that happens around rap culture right. you know um but his 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 spawn uh your 1090 jakes your mm-hmm. your uh trap lord ross your, your trap G, trap geek jimmy those mm-hmm. people um it, it, from, as far as I could tell, are from 100% outside the culture. Yeah. And, and have entered the culture's media sphere to only pick from the worst parts of what's going on around rap and tell those stories and, and, and proliferate those stories and, and, and push those stories into the world and monetize yeah. those stories. Mm-hmm. And speak of it, speak of it as if this this thing that they're talking about is the primary driving force of hip hop culture, crime. It's not it. Mm-hmm. Not even close. Yeah. Not even close. And each of these motherfuckers got millions of views on every single video that they drop. 
So in, in essence, they documenting the history for kids to come. And they not documenting what's what's real. Yeah. Not you at know, all. not that these crimes, not that these crimes ain't really happening. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But when I say what's real, I mean what's real hip hop. Yeah. That's not what they document. And it's very, very few people document what's real hip hop. Yeah. You know. Uh so mm. media culture votes. Which one of them outside of well, I wouldn't even ask you outside. Who's who's the biggest media culture vulture in your eyes? Oh, it, it, simple. Uh, Vlad is definitely the Mike Jordan, uh, a media culture vulture. Um, and I feel like Adam Twenty Two, no jumper, is Oof. he's number two. Kobe. Yeah, and then number three, yeah. believe it or not, is at. Yeah, at, I'm gonna be honest with you. You might be right. And I'm gonna call Vlad Jordan because he was he was first. Right. That's why. I, not yeah, necessarily. Yeah. Because yeah, right. he was first and he became great first. Right. And, I mean, greatly known, not great, greatly known. Yeah. Uh, Adam twenty two, very much so, analogy wise, because like Kobe, he was an emulator. Kobe mm-hmm. became who he was because he was nice at what he did, but he emulated Jordan. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No jumper, Adam 22 became popular for what he was doing, but he was emulating Vlad. Yeah, I was, yeah, for sure. Right? And then you got LeBron. Somebody to come along as an absolute freak of nature. They got a new style. They got a new way of doing it. Mm-hmm. They younger. And now they just completely running shit, and that's at. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are the top three. Yeah, those um, gotta be the top three. Yeah, and want to ask your underlings, man. We we talked about it real quick. Uh, 1090 Jake, end of sentence. His his that's the name of his platform. End of sentence. 1090 Jake. How do you feel about him? So so. <clears throat> So I feel like what he's doing video wise is culture vulture, right? Mm, um, mm-hmm. Culture vulture ish, right? Um, yeah. But but the way I but so so some people may have come and become acquainted with 1090 Jake through um, through his, his platform to be like, but I didn't. I just saw him being interviewed on other platforms. And knew of his background in Boston, a bunch of fights, and being a white dude that was, became blood, and mm-hmm. then being in prison in uh, Florida and what happened, like some of the stuff that was going on with him in, uh, in the prisons and there. Um, and so that's how I knew about his story. Then him, you know, then when he had got out having having a fight with this dude that was, was on camera. Uh, so that's how I knew. Of him is just some, you know, he was a person that people was. So I became came to know him as a person when we're talking about people. I don't know if it's exploitation, but they're doing stories. They based were exploiting him. Stories based, yeah. And then he yeah. turns around and now he's doing the stories. So I don't know what that. I don't know what that. I don't know. Like if people have got their views up off of you and your stuff, like now you decide you're going to like. Have a network. I don't know how that works. I don't know. So I, I'm, I, I'm I, I feel you. I'm a little I torn you. over it. Yeah. See, I didn't. I didn't have as much background information on him as you did. I found him through what, how he got popular. Now this end of sentence thing. Uh, my view on it, not knowing his background, and and now that I know a little bit, I don't know that my view changed much. Mm-hmm. Um. And of course, he, you know, was just came up, uh, of course, with, with black people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fine. It's, it's fine. Matter. Like, my thing it is. Matter. But, uh, but what I will say, unlike Ack, he, he had, you know what I mean? And maybe it was because who he's around, but he had, um, he was interested in hip hop, you know, since back then. Yeah. Now, 
I wouldn't have Which a problem a with different it. from act. Right. Right. Now, yeah, see, yeah. I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. And I don't know that I would have a problem with act. Right. Mm-hmm. Not knowing anything about hip hop. If what they were talking about was learning more about hip hop. Right. But it's not. And yeah. understanding hip hop culture more and exposing hip hop culture more. I don't know that I would have a problem with them being that type of, I mean, being a, being a, a face, a media face. Now, mm-hmm. when you don't have that background in hip hop and you don't know a lot and you, and you're not really talking about music at all, all you're talking about is the, the, the death and destruction that's going on inside the game. Mm-hmm. You know, you capitalizing off the, off the T, mm-hmm. you know? So for 1090, 1090 Jake, for instance, if 1090 Jake was on his YouTube talking about things that go on inside the prison system, uh, telling stories of people that, not music people, but just people. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? That are, that, are, that are about to go to trial. What's going to happen with this person's trial? Did this person snitch on that person? That right. may be fine because that's the world you're from. But yeah, yeah. the stories that you're deciding to tell are the musicians that are going through this. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? You you yeah. you're pinpointing the artists that are going through this. Yeah. So that's hip hop culture. That's you see what I'm saying? Like so, you're going inside hip hop culture, finding something to feast on, dragging it out, and using that for your sustenance. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's the that's culture vulturing. Like what the yeah. fuck? Nah, nah, you know what I mean? Like, there's million stories. Just uh, uh, the, like the, of, the same type dude. Thinking about trap, the, trap for go ahead, go ahead. no, no, no. Go oh, ahead. I was gonna, I was gonna say that the the dude trap geek Jimmy, right? Mm-hmm. I'm looking. He got eight hundred thirty one thousand subscribers. This motherfucker only has thirty one videos on his channel. <laughs> and his description is. The best stories in rap. I mean, the best stories worth telling in rap. The best stories worth telling in rap. And I go to the video. Uh, I'm just going to read a few. The Bronx Burning. Rico, Rico's for the Drillers. That's the mm-hmm. subtitle. The next one is King Slime. Inside the takedown of Young Thug and YSL. The next one. The Disney World Rico inside the largest crew takedown in Florida. The next one, Young and Ace and Fulio, the demons of Duval County. The next one, Pooh Shiesty, the real menace of South South Memphis. I don't gotta keep fucking reading these because they don't get no better. Right, right. These See, are the now, best stories no, worth that's, telling that's and rap. Problem. That's the problem, and that's when it becomes. That's how you know you're not out of the culture because you you you're saying these. Death and destruction of black lives is the best stories that you, as a white person from the UK, nigga, you ain't even from here. And this is Hold the best story. That's, tra- that's Trap Lord Ross. Yo, trap Lord Ross is just as bad, but yes. Right. Yes. Same right. guys. Might as well be the same person. Right. Yeah. But but you saying that this is the best, that means that that means you clearly you was not in love with Illmatic. <laughs> clearly, you don't have <laughs> healthy respect for the infamous album. Like, right, like but right. You know well, hell, even that great stories. There are great stories surrounding all of these albums and verses, and yeah. this happened and that happened. It's beautiful stories that can be told about yeah. the the music that makes up the culture, or, or the music that yeah. came out of the culture. Like, so yeah. that that is not black people killing each other and getting arrested and raided by feds and indicted on RICO cases is not the best. Rap stories to be told, but see the fact that a white to me, I have a problem with that. The fact that a white person can say that, white or black, I have yeah. a, not even more of a white person because you're even further disconnected. So I, have right. a, I have a problem with anybody saying that. Yeah, I agree. I one hundred percent agree. I'm gonna the tell you the truth. Genre that, that's ever existed in music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a problem. I have. A, you know what? Thinking about it, I might have a pro- I might have a bigger problem with somebody black saying it because they should know better. 
Right. Of course. You know what yeah. I mean? But yeah. I do have a problem with somebody completely outside the culture coming inside the culture of black people and saying the best stories to be told. You know, the best stories to be told about y'all is the ones where y'all kill each other. Yeah, that sounds crazy. Now, watch that sounds this. crazy. I, I, I'm, just, I'm not on. I'm not on. Yay. I'm not on no yay yeah. time. But I'm just saying right. it, you could not you could not write that about Jews. You know, the best thing to talk about Jews Jewish people is when they decided to kill each other. Right. You mm. couldn't say that. Fuck no. And it you definitely can monetize off of it. You damn sure can't make 31 videos and have 831,000 subscribers talking about that shit. They'll get you off of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that ain't gonna happen. Oh. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. That's a fact. Uh, so you're right, dog. You are absolutely right. A Jewish person couldn't do that. Right. Right. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. not only could we not do it, a Jewish person can't do that. Exactly. Shit. And that can they be will said shut for that the shit Asians, down. Mexicans, yep. like, none of, you can't do it for any of these other, uh, any of these other. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, they'll let you talk shit about the Arabs, though. You can shit yeah. on the Arabs all you want to. You can shit on the Arabs all you want to. Yeah. They, uh, they don't give a damn what you say about them. Uh, yeah, us in the Arabs, boy, we catch hell. Yeah, I mean, that one, one, one of the what? Is, what is those called? Like you know, disrespectful names. I forgot what uh, I, 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 slur. Yeah, slur. But there's another name for it. But anyway, that's why they call it like you know the Arabs uh, sand niggas. It, exactly. So they look exactly. at them at the level, you know, of you know the blacks. Yep. In America. Yep. That's a fact. That is an absolute fact. Man, uh, I got a couple of the names down here, and I don't want to just... I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm an equal opportunist. I don't want to just bring up a couple of these names that I wrote down and not say them all. So I'm going to just say them all. Shit. Okay. Uh, Trap Lord Ross is absolutely from the UK. Uh, he, I ain't going to front, though. He, he, he loves rap music. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I kind of, I'm, I, because if you watch it, his, well, he love it. He love it enough to be able to do it because he can rap well enough oh, yeah. to make commercials yeah. rapping. You know what I mean? Like he can, yeah. you know, he can rap in pretty much any style that, that's, he, that he could, the drill stuff, the, the trap stuff, like he could formulate his words. He's a writer. Yeah. Uh, so I could tell that he's that he was that he's immersed himself in hip hop, but he still chose this. And it, you know, I don't know what's worse, man. It's like the ones that immerse themselves and have a love for it, and still choose to be a vulture, and still choose to only tell the horror stories. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, what is uh-huh. that about, bro? I know what it's about because me and you yeah. sit here have thoughtful and in depth conversations, and we don't be throwing, we don't be going for the hot take, we don't be up here spilling the tea, we're not yeah. up here arguing, and 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 you know, and it's hard yeah. to get traction when it's not ignorance. Exactly, that's what it is. Yeah. So, so they just I mean, fold into the ignorance. Right, right. So it's the same. Oh, it's the same as the old saying: "Sex sells." It's same, the same thing. thing. They know yep. violence, yep. ignorance, yep. sales. That's what people want to hear. People are going to click, you know what I mean? The most salacious sounding title of a video. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. So, all right. Ch- Trap Lord Ross, 1090 Jake, Say Cheese, and Off the Porch. Uh, academics, Fed It, Trap Geek Jimmy. Hello, Yasin and Vlad TV, or, or who I have written down here. Uh, okay. We can speak about Say Cheese and Off the Porch real quick. Okay. I don't know how familiar you are. They, 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 uh, the Southern version mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. No Jumper and Vlad. Yeah. yeah. But they black. Yeah, they're black. Yeah, I'm familiar with the setup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Southern version of, of No Jumping Black, they just, they just black, mm-hmm. uh, which, and, and you've had artists come at Say Cheese talking about he, he, he perpetuated beefs and, 
You know, they only talking to niggas when niggas got bullshit to say, it seems like. And mm-hmm. and 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 what's happening is our artists are being conditioned to come up with bullshit to say when you get on these platforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see what I mean? To make the numbers go up. Yeah. To make the numbers, to make their numbers go up. My, my my shit gotta ring off like they shit ring off. So I gotta say something wild on here. You know? Yeah. Uh so those two dudes. Or, or two entities, I feel like, or or akin to the other ones, and they ain't doing no better. And hopefully, they'll hear this and they can give us some feedback on why they're not culture vultures. Maybe they do things that we don't see, and they just don't get as much burn. I don't believe that. Right, me either. I don't believe it, but maybe that's true. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're wrong, but. It's so many different ways to do media, man, that it's, it's sad that reporting reporting on the death and destruction. Now, it, what's also sad is that there's so much death and destruction for them to report on. We're not helping ourselves. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that, that could easily be their kind of argument. Well, shit, y'all stop doing it. We'll stop talking about it. Yeah. But if you saw yeah, that, we'll, yeah, I, not, and yeah. I understand that. But whether we stop or not, that doesn't justify or make right what they're doing, right? And I was going to say, and maybe the, and maybe some of the the, the say cheese, um, and off the porch, maybe they feel like, well, hell, if someone out from outside of our race and maybe outside the culture too, if they're going to do a show talking about the stuff and get money, I might as well at least it's my people. So, but even that's wrong too. I'm just saying, I don't know if that's their thinking or not, but I'm sure they right. did see, have seen how Vlad and Adam have popped and they've said, hey, I'm, I'm more connected yeah. than they are. I know more about this than they do, so I should be talking about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it's it a, probably it's is a, some, it's a, yeah, entitlement in that. Yeah, you're right. Right, but, but look, like, the crazy thing is Right. This is what's crazy. How you said, like, they may be like, well, y'all stop doing it. We won't have nothing to talk about. No, if y'all stop. I don't know this to be the case, but what I do know is that talking about stuff feeds it. Yes. Putting that energy yes. back out there, grabbing onto that yes. energy, then putting it back out there and giving spins and on it and yes. chopping the videos up and saying this about that yeah. one and bringing new information, going to look up this person's girlfriend on IG and then putting that picture with your video. All of that continue makes it keeps going. Like, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. they, 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 yeah. they actually become, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an accessory after the fact. Yeah, yeah. I, I Yeah, and that's what they've been, that's, that's I've heard them be accused of that like stirring up shit because they went and talked to this person when they know this person they got this person to say this and then went and talked to this person shit Mm -hmm. math was doing it with styles p in it yeah i was just about to say that i didn't like that how okay styles p and then the next time jay hood and then he asked you know this stuff but yeah Mm -hmm. it's not good it's not good at all. Now, one thing that they one thing that they probably will push back, one way they would push back, I imagine, is we say, okay, the crime is committed in the street and they are perpetuating it by talking about it and, and chopping it up and putting it back into the world. They could argue, though, ain't nobody got to click that shit. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Ain't nobody got to click it. But this dude is sitting up here with 831,000 subscribers. So a lot of people are clicking it. Mm-hmm. You know, the, well, the sad part is, is vultures come in all shapes, sizes, ethnic, ethnic, ethnicities, and levels of popularity. Yeah. So you got you got vultures sitting at the house. Waiting for somebody to bring them some red meat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah. And and these and these these it's more than what I listed, but these are the top names that I think of the of people that are right. doing that to hip hop, right? Right. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Um, and then, and then so here's the other thing. On, go ahead, go ahead. Now I was just gonna say because I you know I you know I hate it. I hate escapist arguments, right? If y'all didn't do it, then we would have nothing to report on. Okay, so when it stops, then what are you going to be known for? There you go. Mm-hmm. Then what are you going to do? What's your mm-hmm. talent now? Right. What's your actual talent? You see? Because anybody can just talk. I choose not to. I can just talk about whatever next thing is happening with it. I know people want to hear. About right. it's the latest we yeah. purposely show our minds that the strength of our minds and, and our intellect and our perspective by choosing not to yeah. vulture the culture. Right, because it's too many greater don't do things. hot takes and too yes, many greater things to talk. are things that are more important to us. Yeah. Th- yes, these there are things that hip hop is important to us. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So that's what we talking about. We're like the violence, the violence is important to the people creating the violence and the people that's on the other end of it. But in the grand scheme of things, the violence ain't got shit to do with hip hop. Right. It nothing. Nothing. Music was. Exactly. So I could talk about them niggas forever because they just make me hot. They get under my skin. And it's just so many variables to consider. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I would like for somebody that loves loves these love this type of content that we talking about, and even some people that are trying to do it, and some maybe hopefully some of the ones that are doing it can respond to us and let us know, nah, bro, that ain't how I feel, or that's not what I'm doing, or this is my perspective. You know what I mean? Let us know, so maybe we wrong, or we can have some discourse. If we ain't gonna, I won't shout you down. We won't shout you down. Maybe we we just have a conversation about it, and then everybody will have a better understanding of what's going on. Right. You know. So hopefully we'll get some level of response. But that was just media vultures. We ain't talk about. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much time we need to spend on artistic vultures. No, it, I, well, Post Malone is the poster child for that, and I think it's yeah. very self-explanatory. I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. Um, uh, it would be another was, good example, though. Um, Lil Nas X. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lil Nas X. I don't know that him himself was a culture vulture, but anybody that, but whoever was running that campaign and running right. and, and whoever's in control. Yeah. Whoever is behind him, definitely pause. But whoever, yeah. whatever record execs or business <laughs> people <laughs> supporting them are definitely. Right. So that might lean into the other one. Then that might that might bleed into executive vultures. Oh yeah, and I. But you know what? To be honest, I expect the majority of executives to be vultures. Yeah, because they're about they are bottom dollar based. Yeah, whatever is going to make this company money, and that's what we pushing. I don't even expect okay, them. Okay, that's a good. That's a good point. That's a good point, right? But okay, so let me ask you a couple questions because maybe you know this, maybe you don't. But I heard yeah. some things that was like, "Wait, what? Like, mm-hmm. really?" Um, you heard a youngin, youngin Ace out youngin, of Jacksonville. Youngin Ace. Young, youngin Ace. Youngin Ace. No, I haven't heard of Youngin Ace. Nah. You heard a Queso out of out of uh, Jacksonville. I heard of him. I heard of him. I don't know his music, but I heard Queso. of him. Right, Queso and Young Young and Ace. And you heard of Julio Fulio? Yeah, out of Jacksonville. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, Julio Fulio and Young and Ace hate each other. Okay, and that's why I heard of them. Hate, right? Exactly, hate each other. I don't know their uh, music. I just know their names. Right, right, right. Um, who I smoke. That came from that, you know that you know that song, oh, okay, right? Yeah. When it was, yeah, that came from that beef. The who I smoke shit came from that beef. Okay. Um, 
Now, Julio Fulio, if I'm not mistaken, is signed to it's either Creative Create Music Group or In Grooves. Uh, In Grooves is tied to Interscope. Create yeah. is tied to Universal, but they're like digital firms. Okay. You see what I'm saying? They're basically yeah. digital firms. It's digital distribution. They understand analytics. They understand marketing. So the labels are scooping up companies that do that well because that's really how you get an artist of viability nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. It's through a digital footprint, not through, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you have to do the mm -hmm. other work too, but if you don't have that digital footprint and a company that really understands how to do that, your artist is only going to go so far, right? So these yeah. are companies that are set up to do that part of it. And these are companies that I do believe find artists at a lower level, get them to the point, and then get them to the majors. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, all that to say, do you know... Okay, Queso is locked up right now. Queso and his dad is locked up right now for a murder. Yeah. Of one of Julio Fulio people. Yeah, yeah. Queso had a deal, right? Mm -hmm. And there was an there was an exec when he got locked up. The 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 owner of his label showed up in court and said, "I'll pay his bill," and spoke up for him. Right? Okay, mm -hmm. so I hope this is not too convoluted. And I'm telling it all because where they're signed to is fucking crazy. crazy. Yeah. Queso uh, got locked up. Now Young and Ace is that labels, they running with him. Same place, same team, same squad. One of them is in prison. Now the other one is up and up and up and coming. He's coming next. All right. This is really do you know what them niggas are signed to? Um I have no clue. The same record label is Smoke Dizzle and Joey Badass. What? Yes, Johnny Shipe, Cinematic Music Group. I could have never guessed that. I would have never not guessed it. Not in a million fucking years, nigga. Not in a mm. million years would I have thought somebody associated with Smoke Dizzle and Joey Badass would be in Florida signing the gangsterous yeah. of monsters. You see what I mean? That's wild. That is wild. That's crazy. I don't want to call Johnny Shipes a, a culture vulture. You know mm. what I mean? But but it just doesn't seem like his heart and soul would be rooted in war music. Yeah. Because that's all yeah. them niggas make. Op music. I would mm -hmm. I, I would have never imagined that a cinematic music group with Smoke Dizza and Joey Badass on that same roster, you would see Queso and Young and Ace doing op music. Yeah. Does that make Shipes a vulture? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm about to say, yeah. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know, I don't know way, man. Who else to, to put it, to put them. Yeah, but but see that I, I guess that speaks to to uh, to my earlier statement when we was talking about Steve Stout. It's like sometimes I think people fall into a vulture category because we expected more from them. Mm -hmm. But if it was just but if it, well, not necessarily because, yeah, you know what I mean? Because we expect more from them. Because you, because you came up with artists like Smoke Dizza and Joey Badass, and we look at them as, you know what I mean? Like artful hip hop, respectable mm -hmm. hip hop. You know, yeah, yeah. might not be our, their biggest fans, but it's, it's there's a ton of respect for what they do. Right. And how they how they represent the game, right? Yeah. How they represent the culture. And then on the flip side, <laughs> you sign as straight murderers. Mm -hmm. Op music. Because 
you got to be signing it because it's going up. Yeah. You sign Dizza. You'll sign Smoke Dizza. You'll sign Joey because you know they make artful music. Mm-hmm. You sign these mm. guys because because mm-hmm. it, they pay it, the you, bills. Yeah. 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 Damn. He's gonna get a lot of attention. But see, that's the thing. If you can if you can capture the attention, that's money. Views yep. equals money. Yep. 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 And on so on one side of that company, they selling views, and on the other side, they selling art. Mm-hmm. There's a good chance that the views are keeping the lights on so that they could do the art. You know yeah. what I mean? The views are probably keeping the lights on and giving them the opportunity to do all the art they want to do. That in itself is vulturing. You vulturing yeah, yeah. somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you vulturing somebody. Yeah. You know. Uh, I don't know if I'm mad at them, but it's just like that is wild. So that's just one yeah, example. Yeah. If you don't know where these, where, you know, where these people are getting this opportunity from, right? There's all levels of vultures. You mean like there's Universal Music Group is signing this stuff. Columbia is signing it. Orchard Park over it. Uh, Sony is signing it. It's just. And they all, you know, feeding in. I would imagine that the labels is feeding these people that we was talking about earlier in this conversation. The labels are feeding them motherfucking stories. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. It's probably part of your press run to go talk to Vlad. Part of your press run to go talk well, to No Jump. See, that's what I was going to say. I don't think we'll see it going away even, right? So that's what I was going to say. D- in earlier times, I don't want to say back in the day, in earlier times, say 97. Let's just say 97. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The artists get signed. You may work on a single that's radio friendly or not radio friendly, but something to put out and then maybe shoot a video. Your video was like your promotional ad, minus whatever the street team was going to do, put up posters or whatever. But the video was kind of your, your promotional ad. For the people to see you, hear your music, mm-hmm. get acquainted with you, that single in that video. Now the promotional ad is your whatever your latest interview is on Vlad or Adam Twenty Two or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. So that's the thing. That's part yep. of their press run for promoting the album. Are these media platforms that are very culture vulturish? That's true. So that's true. One so hand is mm-hmm. the other, so I don't. It's going to mm-hmm. be hard to break that. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's going to definitely be hard to break it. Um, sadly enough, well, it don't matter how bad it go. I was going to say it's going to have to go really bad for somebody for it to for it to trip itself and kind of reset. But at this point, the worse it goes, the more clicks it gets. Hence, yeah. the more money is made. So they don't give a damn how bad it goes. You know, that don't matter. It's almost so, a plus for it to go bad. Yeah. You know what would change? If an ex- What's and that? I'm not, and I'm not saying this should happen, but I'm making the point. If if some of these people that we say in a culture, vulturous, if, if they get hit, Say that again. If, that, if the media platform people are the ones getting shot, if the mm-hmm. exec promoting are the ones getting shot, then it will change. <laughs> yeah, niggas would be like, hey, we got to stop this, yo. They're coming after everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. They're doing it from an ivory tower. Yeah, they're doing it from an ivory tower. You're right, man. You're absolutely right. Uh, Yeah, man, that's executive culture vultures are the worst and for what we're looking at executive wise it's hard to tell you know like it's a lot like slavery um we're starting to sell our own people into slavery in that way Mm -hmm. you know um you got people like what spot them got them but no not spot them got them 42 doug Right, mm-hmm. you know, this nigga signed the uh, 
he signed to Lil Baby and Yo Gotti. Mm. Yeah. How did that work? Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> like, <laughs> in a joint deal with Universal or something like it's either Universal or Interscope, but yeah. hmm. in a joint deal. So he 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 three people. Mm -hmm. Three people. Like, you know, two 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 street level, and then they, they hand you off to the big boys. Mm hmm Hopefully he don't do nothing crazy, but it's like are they putting you this speaks back to our conversations? Should the labels have to be more responsible over the artist will bring being? Are they putting you in a position to do more dumb shit or are they putting you in a position to actually do well for yourself and, and be a viable citizen for a longer period of time? And and I say I say I say yes. And I understand business not isn't always operating from a moral standard, but I say yes because they care about keeping you safe enough to get whatever music they can out of you to make the money. So on the flip side, they should care about you know I mean the one that's making them the money, the artist. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I agree. I agree at least to that standpoint. But right? I know that's yeah. not you know how it goes. Yeah, that's 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 uh some would say an idealistic way of looking at things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, idealistic way of looking at things. Uh I don't I don't know, man, if we can 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 you think of any unintentional culture vultures? Like people that just ended up doing it and just did this is what they intention. No, I I can't personally I can't think of any. Mm. I didn't All write any down. I know of are ones that, to be honest, are ones that you know consciously made a decision to do it. Yeah, yeah. And they're doing it for the reasons that we stated. But yeah, if they're out there, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that's one of them things. I think people listening, if it, if it, like the few thing, if y'all could think of anybody that may be uh, vulture in the culture unintentionally without even knowing that that's that's what they're doing i'll tell you the truth i might i might add unintentional to post malone i don't know that post malone ever set out to be a quote-unquote mc no but he you know used I mean? yeah but he used our yeah. demographic to get it popping he so did. that's my concern with him didn't you yeah. left yeah yeah, and left, and I mean completely left. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I would agree. Yeah, it's funny because, in my opinion, Post Malone is like the reverse Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake didn't really? have to come fuck with us at all. Justin Timberlake didn't have to come fuck with us, bro. No, you're right. You're that nigga right. was a mega star. You're right. He didn't yeah, have to come do black did. music. Right, he, he yeah. did, but he and, and, yeah, he kept doing it. He did one, he did yeah, a, he did that kind of country sound album after that, like decades later. But yeah, but but he when did, he, it when did he did stopped doing, in. huh? It did help him tap into a new demographic, though. Of course, it did. You know what I mean? Which was new, which was another stream of you know money for his music. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and to be honest, it's just like well. If you want, if you want to be cool, you you want to be popping. You got to come through our way, right, and get our stamp. And he wanted that. Yeah, yeah, he wanted he wanted to be cool and all that. But popping mm -hmm. at that particular time, he was popping and he was more popping than all the black artists. When? That he was leaving when you see him when he left in sync. But what? Okay, so what I'm saying is like, so when I think of the first time he made music catering to black people, um, was the you know fake Michael Jackson song, which we knew, we, we, you know what I mean? Damn, I forget the name of it. But at that I know time, what song you talking about? Yeah, you know what song I'm talking about. But yeah, at that time, the for though, real joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, so at that time, he wasn't. Um, yeah, he was. 
At that time? Yeah, he was. He was at that time he was bigger than any nigga on the planet. No, see, I thought at he that was, time. He, he, nah, he son. Was that nigga he was already he was already in in sync. I know that, but what I'm saying is after he left and stuff like that, I I thought You missing the point. Time. You missing the point. You <laughs> missing the point. The motherfucker was with in sync. Yeah, I get that. Then he left. At that point, you the big you're not that it ain't nobody that we had rocking at that time bigger than NSYNC in the Backstreet Boys. I know, but I'm no, saying? what I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you missing what I'm saying. You like just right talking now. about our little culture. You no, just no, talking no, about no, our no, little no. culture. No, okay, no, okay, no. okay. But what I'm saying is nobody's listening to NSYNC right now. So that my point is, so obviously it died out right over time. No one is like listening. Not that they can't tour or whatever. But what I'm saying is mm-hmm. I thought at the time that song came out that was produced by Pharrell, it had been years since he left in sync, and he wasn't. He didn't nah. have no buzz and no music out. That's what I thought. Nah, you, nah, you wrong as hell. Nah, that motherfucker. That shit was fairly instant when he left in sync. He left that motherfucker and got busy. Matter of fact, I can remember the last in sync video that I that I remember, right? And it was mm-hmm. a song called "Gone." It was just acoustic and them niggas singing. It was pretty much a pretty ass R and B song, and when he when they dropped that, I was like, "Oh, he out of there!" As soon as I saw that, I was like, "Oh, he out of there!" Next thing you know, mm-hmm. he was out of there, mm-hmm. and he never looked back because that's what he wanted to be doing. He wanted to be doing black music in the first place. Yeah, you see clearly. what I'm saying? So that nigga rose to pop stardom, and then switched to black music. That almost mm-hmm. never happens. Yeah, yeah. You should, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like you yeah, don't you reverse. don't find yeah. people that get that, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. do it in reverse to get the pop status and then switch to black music. Right. You see what I'm saying? Generally, they start with black music, gain our acceptance, you know what I mean, and then switch to pop, which mm-hmm. is what Posty did. Yeah. But I understand perspective wise, like, and I understand why you might see it that way too, because you wasn't listening to none of that shit at that point in time. No. Yeah, that was not so. Justin yeah. Timberlake wasn't on your radar at all. He he would have had to been standing next to Pharrell to be on your radar. Right, right. And of course, I knew you know what I mean who Instinct was. Backstreet who Boys. Was. I'm not listening yeah, to yeah. this stuff. Right, right. And I couldn't. Right. Point I wouldn't listen. Out. I didn't have the yeah, albums, but when that gone shit hit, yeah, when that gone shit hit, I was like, I know a hit when I hear one, and I was like, yo, that's that is ridiculous. That shit was fire. Yeah, yeah. Like fire and you know so he kind of he kind of did it in a in a like really you coming to fuck with niggas like that huh yeah now <laughs> i can't say at that i can't say at that time if you was gonna go mess with some producers the two to go mess with would have been for real and Timberland. Timberland. i don't give a damn what kind of music yeah. you're doing yeah, yeah. you could be doing a country album you might want to go rock with for real and timberland at that time so he could have you mean you could still be right but yeah but maybe he's an unintended culture vulture. Yeah, he might. He yeah, he may be one. Um, did he did he turn after he made some black music? Did he go back and then he come did back? one album, the man in the the man in the woods album. Yeah, yeah, he did the man in the woods album, and it's 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 more outdoorsy kind of mm-hmm. country feeling, folksy. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But and and the way it was promoted. Black people rejected it. But if you actually go listen to it, it's a lot more soulful. It's a lot more, for lack of a better word, black than you would imagine it is by the title in the in the first song they put out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He didn't he didn't just completely abandon, but I guess the way they said when he decided that he wanted to tell the story about him and his wife and his kid and his family and stuff, he start, he he switched to a, a wider palette. <laughs> yeah, a more Caucasian palette, yeah, color yeah. palette in that. You know what I mean? Yeah, he painted from a more Caucasian color palette when he chose to speak his life, right? On what he was going through, you know what I mean? But when you just trying to get your dance on, he he paint with our colors. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Hey man. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I think this is pretty comprehensive. 
<laughs> I think so. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I wish I had like some more unintentional culture voices just, like on the top too. of my head. But it was a term that came because I think I, I figured everybody can't be doing it on purpose, so I listed it. But it wasn't one of them ones that things just jumped out at me. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Leo might be one, but I don't yeah. think Leo was a vulture. You don't? You think Leo was? You you think he's a culture vulture? Hell yeah. Why? For everything we named about Vlad. <laughs> what did he do? Yeah, they, they, ain't, they ain't telling me nothing. What did he do? What didn't he do? What didn't he do to make that, that, that cemented him in the culture? What didn't he do? Oh, you said what did he do? He what brought, didn't he, he do? Okay, he was responsible for breaking up Rockefeller. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Fuck that. He he ain't responsible. Jay Z's responsible. Jay Z the one took the motherfucking money. All he did was offer it. <laughs> so I guess I guess I, I don't count. No, I guess so I, actually. So I take it back. I wouldn't say that Leo is is a culture vulture. Although like Dame, and so Dame has more of an inside look. He had more interactions yeah. with. Him. So maybe from yeah. Dave's perspective, he is. From my perspective, I would say I can only say he may be snakeish and have done some bad dealings. Right. He, yeah, he may have done some. De- you and know so that's true. We, and like, we confuse a bad businessman or someone being snakeish has just been an outright culture vulture. Culture vulture. And it's true. Like now, from my end. I don't. I can't speak exactly. from Dave's perspective. Exactly. And I'm gonna also say outside of Rockefeller breaking up. Who else speaks of Leo Cohen as a culture vulture? Anybody in the coach? Anybody? Name one other person from the de- from that from that Def Jam era that speaks of Leo in a foul way, other than J- other than Dame Dash. Yeah, I'll wait because yeah. I can't yeah. think of nobody. Yeah, no, Don't nobody no. speak down on him. Don't nobody say he did them dirty. Don't nobody say nobody but Dame. Mm-hmm. You ain't heard one story of, of, of Leo putting somebody in a bad deal. You ain't heard one story of Leo leaving a nigga in the lurch. You ain't heard one story. Nothing. Well, I got, I don't know. We may have to go back on bad deals and do, do some research. Because uh, when War Report came out, what, 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 what label was, what major did that come out through? They won't on, they, they won't on, they won't on, they won't Tommy Boy. Okay. Okay. They want Tommy Boy. And and the person that did that was the lawyer. That's why he talked that's why he was so mad with uh Combat Jack. That's why yeah. Nord was mad with Combat Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me make sure. I think let me make sure though. I'm, let's make sure. Uh War Report, CNN. Mm-hmm. What label that was. I doubt very seriously it was on Def Jam though. Nah, it was on yeah, Penalty, Tommy Boy, Warner Brothers. Okay. I think they want Tommy Boy first, then they went to Penalty. And, and penalty then they ended up one of them is a subsidiary of yeah, of, of Warner Brothers. Yeah. So I think mm-hmm. they were on Tommy Boy. Remember he said uh something he said Nori said it in the song, something Tommy Boy. I can't remember what he said, but he definitely said it in the song. That's what made me think Tommy Boy first. Uh okay. but I also give Leo a credit for being in it because he was he was doing uh he was road managing this shit for Run DMC before they was really anybody. Yeah, yeah, he did he did he did some stuff in the yeah, high end so X. Right. So he did yeah. some he did some he did some stuff. Yeah, so I mean that's another thing we gotta like. We have somebody highly respectable in the culture call somebody a culture vulture. We kind of just rock with them, but we might just need to take a step back and be like, "You might be hating, nigga." Because <laughs> yeah. Biggs don't say it, Jay don't say it, Irv don't say it, Nori don't say it. Yeah, Nori loved none of these nigga. Nori loved that motherfucker. Irv loved that motherfucker. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So Leo might be getting a bad rap. That's why he don't bark too much, because he know Dame full of shit. <laughs> Not full of shit, but yeah, he know yeah. Dame and his feelings. Yeah. Dame and his feelings about that. I, I would imagine. Um Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know, man. What I, what I do yeah. hold against him is uh yeah. these long ass YouTube ads and all this stuff. <laughs> this stuff that that was that started happening once he became the president of music over at YouTube. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, he put a lot of stuff in. He made sure YouTube was gonna get their money. Yeah. <laughs> sure that. He made sure YouTube was gonna get their money. Man. This was interesting. Yeah. I hope we ain't talked all the way around the world and people got a, a, a better view of inside our thoughts on culture vultures and where they come from and how not to be one. Yeah. I guess the best thing now is to say the easiest way not to be a culture vulture, man, is just immerse yourself in. First of all, look up and see what the real tenets of hip hop are and understand that if you ain't studying those and you are, are placing a higher value on something outside of those five tenets, if you're placing a higher value on something outside of those high, high tenets, those five tenets, you're likely being a culture vulture. Right. That's a that's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, that's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you yeah, place if more, you're, if you're mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, placing more importance on something surrounding the culture, involving the culture, dealing with the culture, that's you you're making it more important than these five tenets that are the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, then you probably being a vulture. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably it. Yeah. And that, that, that's monetary gain. That's anything. Right. I don't care what it is. You know? Yeah. So, like I said, yeah. It's perfect. That's it. We wrap that one up. Put a bow on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put a bow on that one. Cause, so, shit. That was a, a thoughtful and in-depth conversation about hip hop, fam. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's what I that was. A thoughtful get, and in I wonder if we're going to get a lot of comments for our uh, for the Leo take. Yeah, this niggas ain't gonna like that. I, I yeah, because I, I I think if we do get a lot of comments before the Leo tape, it's because people didn't listen to what we said. It's just that as soon as they heard us say we don't think Leo is a culture vulture, they turned their ears off and started disagreeing <laughs> instead of listening. You know what I mean? It started started rebutting and it started the rebuttal process in their head before they finished hearing us out. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I'm just looking at the I'm just looking at the the information that's out there. You know, and, and there's information from a whole lot of people, and there's only one person talking crazy that's screaming it, and everybody else is like, nah. Nah, bruh tripping. And we know bruh be tripping. Mm -hmm. We know bruh be tripping. It ain't like it ain't like Dame don't speak from his feelings. Yeah. You know, so it might just be a case of that. You know, yeah. <sighs> but I think we, I think we covered it, man. All I think right. we covered it. And unless you got something else you want to drop out there, because I think that's all I had. No, nah, no, nah, I don't have anything else. I, 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 yeah, I think we covered all the important points for sure. Yeah, and more important, and this is one of those laid things. out how not to be a culture vulture. There you go, there you go, there you go. Just place more importance on the tenants. Even if you just pick a tenant, you ain't got to place your importance on all of them. You ain't got to care about graffiti and break dancing. Mm -hmm. You ain't, you mean just just care about something inside those tenants, and don't make things outside those tenants more important than the the, the culture itself. Period. Right. Once you start doing that, you in vulture land. Mm -hmm. You in vulture land. So, yeah, uh, man, shit. With that, man, I guess I'm gonna tell the people to follow us on socials, yo. Follow us at Instagram, uh, at Conversate for a few. 
Follow us on on, on Facebook. Uh, what is it? The graveyard or social graveyard media. Social media. <laughs> yeah. Um. That shit. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. Hit that notification bell so that you know when we drop. We drop an episode every Friday at seven a.m. Uh, stay tuned for the limited edition merch. Stay tuned mm. for the. Uh, the the conversate for a few audio book yeah uh, yay we got some things cooking man we got some things yeah. cooking yeah and uh drop us in the comments man and let us know what you thought about this conversation if we forgot anything or if there's some points that you like yo y'all 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 completely messed this up put that in the comments um anything anything you think about what we had to say we want to know it and I make sure to go in and try to respond as much as possible. I might be a few days late, but hell, I'm gonna get to it. Uh, yeah, but with that being said, yo, I'm Jonna. I'm Alan. This was not a podcast about classical music. Absolutely was not. This is a podcast about hip hop. Make room for the tag. Conversate for a few. Conversate for a few. Hustle, welcome, man, they had to send me Hustle from Raleigh, live from NC With your hosts, John and Allen Relate to the two, you are now listening to Conversate for a few Check it on SoundCloud, debate with your crew They talking hip-hop from the late to the new From July till June end, no Fridays for me Tune in, please listen to this podcast Please listen to this podcast Please listen to this podcast. 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 Please listen to this podcast.